numbers all over the place. So any any activity by Idra, Stork is going to see here. So I really like the position Stork is in right now. Um, he's got uh, six gateways cranking. I'm sure he's going to be able to put up uh, some more gateways right now. He has got a Templar Archives up, and he's making his first push into the Terran base. I think he's going to find Terran has far too many siege tanks for him to handle at this point, um, as well as the fact that uh, he almost lost his observer there to that turret. Oh, and I have to sneeze. Whew, it's right on the uh, border. Uh, anyway, so continues. Uh, Stork continues to produce a lot of Dragoons, pretty light on the Zealots, and I haven't seen any shuttles yet for those Zealot bombs, but uh, I am seeing the Templar Archives now, so I'm not sure if we're going to see uh, Dark Templars or Templars or what he's planning on uh, doing with those so far as there's nothing researching at the Templar Archive, so I'm not seeing any Storm or anything researching yet. And all the while, he is uh, walled in the upper right-hand corner, and throwing up a photon cannon behind there so he can uh, avoid some of those uh, vulture uh, harassments. The vultures did get over there just in time to catch that cannon, though. But Stork, of course, saw that with one of his observers and was able to get a whole bunch of uh, goons over there to uh, counteract the uh, offense that, uh, that Idra was trying to do with his vultures there. So trying to kind of harass around the map with those two vultures, but I don't think those are going to proved to be very effective considering Stork has a nice blend of uh, defense kind of or unit groups all throughout the map here. Um, meanwhile, Idra does have that second expansion, but Stork has a clear view of it with that observer that's still uh, still up there. Continuing to produce out of looks like six factories now. So we got probably four factory vultures and two factory tanks, and then he's throwing up another factory here. Um, I don't see a starport yet, which is interesting because I okay a starport is going up. I think he'd want to um, he'd want to get psi vessels up because I think he saw that uh, that Templar archives when he uh, was rushing with his vultures. So he he's going to want to get psi vessels, knowing that there might be DTs in play here pretty soon. Although I haven't seen um, Stork build. Oh, okay, so we've got three high Templars now, but I haven't seen Stork produce any DTs yet. Um, although he does have 10 gateways he's producing out of now. Um, and only one forge. And with this economy, I would sort of expect to see maybe more forge here, getting the upgrades a little bit quicker if he's going to be going solid melee. Looks like he's really only interested in producing ground units. He hasn't really produced any other higher tier uh, structures yet. So he's got a Stargate coming in, so maybe he's going to throw out some Corsairs or maybe... Uh, for D-Web, or maybe he's going to bring out carriers, but probably not from one Stargate there. So probably Corsairs or Arbiters. Um, he's just getting gas at his, his upper right-hand expansion there, and he's just got a mass of ground units right now. And I think I think Sork is going to be able to uh, defeat the, the ground force of, of Idra if Idra tries to push too far here. So let's see what happens here. This is quite a big force, and those tanks are doing really well against the... Uh, the Zealots early on, so I think Stork is going to be forced to retreat, even uh, even with that Zealot bomb. And there are just way too many tanks here from Hydra. It looks like about probably 24 tanks right here, 20 tanks, something like that. So uh, Stork is going <laughs> to, he's definitely going to retreat quickly back to his base here. Um, he's going to try to sneak some guys sort of around here to get a, a better angle on this, um, because there's just way too many tanks from Hydra right now. Uh, Stork continuing to harvest but not uh, not really produce any new tech yet it looks like he is throwing up that Arbi arbiter tribunal there so um, he's gonna go arbiters to help uh, keep all of his stuff cloaked here coming around the other side to keep Idra on his toes he obviously doesn't want all those tanks going on the offense so he wants to uh, kinda keep Idra tied up by by moving those goons back and forth and, and picking off what he can um, as Idra continues to uh, push his force toward Stork's base. This is going to be a this is going to be an interesting battle here as uh, as he continues to push this many tanks towards Stork. I like what Stork did there, just bringing in the Zealot bomb to keep those tanks sort of busy and uh, able to take out a couple tanks with just a few Zealots just from uh, friendly fire there. So that was a, a nice maneuver. So he's got another bomb with some deep or some uh, high Templars in it, and let's see how that how that works against the. Uh, the tanks here. It looks like Stork has a pretty good blend. Some really nice storms there, getting uh, getting most of the tanks, the front tanks, caught up in the side storms there. Um, he is going to retreat again, but he did take out about half of the Terran force there. 
Um, and the thing about Terran, as we know, is they're a lot less mobile. I mean, he's got, you know, eight factories he's producing out of back here, but at the same time, uh, he has to get all those tanks up here to, to make them effective, whereas Protoss is producing out of at least ten gateways right now, so he'll have, you know, ten more Dragoons and or Zealots to, to replace the ones that just went down, and they'll get here a lot quicker, ready to be used. So Hydra is uh, continuing to try to push here, and uh, he does bring another wave of metal up here, so he's just slowly but surely heading toward the Protoss base. But I, I really think that with uh, the resource advantage of Protoss here, um, and another Nexus going up over in the upper right, um, I really think he's going to be able to continue to produce enough units to, to counteract this here as Hydra pushes in. Um, you know, the front of the front of Hydra's force is, is sort of spread out all the way, you know, halfway down the map here. So there's going to be definitely weak spots. And, and Stork is skipping that all together. He says, go ahead and take that expansion. I got two more. I'm coming around, and I'm going to get your expansion, Biatch. So, uh, so Stork rushing in around to that second natural. And, and, and as I mentioned early on in this game, the uh, second natural is, is a little bit more difficult to defend because there's two wide access points. And Stork really doing a good job of taking advantage of those in this game, keeping Hydra on his toes. Every time he goes around and sort of picks off a piece of... Uh, Hydra's second expansion there, Hydra is forced to kind of go back and defend and, and uh, lose a little bit of focus on his, on his front attack here. So um, Stork does have his first Arbiter out, so this is going to be uh, interesting to see what he does here. I don't know if he's got Stasis Field or what he's researched for it yet, but he's continuing to produce another Arbiter out of that Starport, or Stargate rather. And uh, he's just finishing up his Nexus in the upper right-hand corner as well. Hydra is now uh, looking like he's throwing up another command center now. But you know what? I really think he's probably too far behind in resources. I know Protoss is supposed to have, like, you know, one more base than the Terran player or something like that. But um, Stork has pretty much con uh, consistently had more than... Uh, more than Hydra here. So he's had, two, like, two or three bases more than Hydra for most of this game. Um, and I think that shows in the uh, blend of his ground force here. And what else shows is the fact that now that he's got an Arbiter and DTs and such mixed in there, big trouble for Hydra because, like I said earlier, he uh, never produced his side vessels. So he's got a science facility, but he doesn't have a control tower there. So I don't even think he's capable of producing side vessels. And so I think it's going to be good game here real quick uh, because Hydra is going to run out of scans and he's not going to have anything to counter the, uh, the Arbiter cloaking here. He did do a nice job with the Goliath taking out that first Arbiter, but as we remember, there was another Arbiter coming out right behind it, um, and I don't know where that Arbiter snuck off to, actually. Um, but I, I thought, oh yeah, there's another Arbiter kind of waiting for the, uh, waiting with the second wave of forces there. Hydra doing a pretty good job of defending that, actually, considering he, he had no... Uh, siege there, but uh, Stork was able to take out most of the uh, most of the stuff that was looking offensive from Hydra there. So Stork again trying to sneak around, but uh, he's going to have to come back and defend as Hydra is starting to bring in his metal here, and he needs to he needs to keep that Arbiter safe right now because Cloak is what's uh, really saving him right now. And Hydra doing a really good job of staying offensive, even though Stork has been trying to keep him on the defense. Um, you, you notice there was no downtime after Stork took out, you know, half of his ground forces just now. And Hydra's just right back up in his face with all of his metal here. So a really nice job. I, I really like uh, I really like how he's keeping Stork on his toes here. And again, I'm not I'm not seeing any scans right now, which is leading me to believe that Hydra may uh may be low on his comsatch, which it looks like he is. He doesn't have enough uh ma magic points or whatever on his comsats to go ahead and keep scanning, so I uh, really wish he'd go ahead and <laughs> create the uh, control tower with his starport, and it looks like he finally is doing that. I think that may have been his undoing here. I, I really think Stork is still in a completely dominant position, even though Hydra is continuing to keep the pressure on. Um, Hydra hasn't contested these bases over here on the right of Stork at all, so Stork definitely has the financial advantage. Um, and then, obviously, with uh, Arbiter Tech on the on the board and and no uh, control tower from Hydra yet, um, he's just he's sort of playing catch up. Yeah, he is doing a good job of keeping Stork on the defense like as, as much as possible. But uh, I think we're going to probably see one more push from Stork here, um, and then probably a GG from Hydra because uh, he won't be able to keep up with with all the. Uh, with all the units Stork's able to continue to produce. And uh, a cool stasis there. He gets a four siege tanks and two Goliaths, so he takes those.